good day class today we're going to solve proportions when we solve proportions we cross multiply or we use cross products which means we're going to take and multiply the numbers that are across from each other so the 4 and the x and the 3 and the 8 okay now you might have learned a shortcut in the past but please do not do the shortcuts because as you can see in a couple slides these get a lot more difficult than what you see in middle school so please make sure you show your steps so we're going to take 4 times x and we're going to get 4x bring down my equal sign and we're going to take 3 times 8 and we're going to get 24. All right? Okay, the same as one step equations, we're going to divide by 4 because it's a multiplication problem. Those cancel ones and x equals 6. All right? So that's stuff you're used to. You might not have showed your work that way, but please make sure again, these get a lot more difficult. Show your stuff. Alright, next two, again, cross products, we're going to take 7 times 12. All right, and get 84. All right, and then we're going to take 8 times m and get 8m. All right. Now we're going to still still going to remember we're going to isolate the m. All right. So that means we're going to divide by 8. Divide by 8. Right. Those 8s cancel. I'm left with my m. Now 8 won't go into 84 evenly, so you can simplify. Okay, so simplify, you can go ahead and divide if you'd like, but fractions are normally what we use in um, algebra. 4 will go into both of them, so 4 is going to go into 8 2 times. 4 will go into 84 21 times. Some with, with 21 over 2. Okay, if you have 10 and 1 half, you are fine. Okay, all right, next one. This is where it gets a little more difficult. You notice here now, we don't have just a variable here. We have a 2x. Okay. So same rules apply. We're going to cross multiply. 2x times 9 is 18x. And then 5 times 7 is 35. All right. We're going to divide by 18 because we want to isolate the x. And x equals. Now 18 won't go into 35 evenly. And I, they don't even have anything in common. So you can leave this 35 over 18. All right, now here's where it gets more into the algebra. The first thing I want you to do whenever you see a problem that has two terms in the top or the bottom, because these, these could be down here. So and it, whenever you see that, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and put parentheses around them. Okay. Now, same rule, but it's a proportion, so we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to take this b minus 8 times the 4. But I'm going to write it how we're used to seeing it, because it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. So I have b minus 8 times 4. Okay. All right, now let's do the other way. we got 5 times b plus 3. Okay. Now it just looks like our variable is on both sides. And again, whenever you have parentheses, you have to get rid of parentheses first. So I'm going to take 4 times b, which is 4b. 4 times negative 8, which is negative 32. 5 times b is 5b, and 5 times 3 is 15. Okay. All right, separate it. All right, I'm going to move the 4b over just because it's smaller and I don't want to have negatives, so I'm going to subtract 4b. All right, those go away. I have negative 32 equals 5b minus 4b is 1b plus 15. All right, and then I want to isolate the b. Okay, remember, get the b by itself. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. Those cancel, so I'm left with b equals, and then negative 32 minus 15 is negative 47. Okay. All right, let's try another one of those. All right, here's the next one. Again, we have two terms in either the top of the numerator or the denominator, so the first thing I'm going to do is put parentheses around them. It seems like it's not a big deal, but trust me when I say you will make fewer mistakes if you remember to do that. Okay, So we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to take 4 times x plus 2. Okay, And then I'm going to take x minus 2 times 3. Again, I'm going to put it how we're used to seeing it. Okay, It doesn't matter. You can put the 3 back here if you'd like. All right, But we're so used to seeing it that way, I like to keep it that way. Distribute again whenever you have parentheses. Parentheses first before you move, combine, anything. You have to get rid of the parentheses. Okay, again, I'm going to help this keep me equation lined up. All 
Alright, I'm going to move the 3x because it's smaller. So we have 3x again. It doesn't matter. You should end up with the same answer no matter if you move the 4x or the 3x. Okay, those go away. 4x minus 3x is x plus 8 equals negative 6. Okay, now I'm going to move the 8. So I'm going to subtract 8 and x equals negative 14. Okay, alright. So that's as tough as they get if you understand that. Um, great. If you don't, please watch these again. You will have these on your test and they will be in your warm-up. Okay. All right, another thing I want to show you, and I'm not, we're not going to do a problem like this, but whenever you're using proportions, a lot of times we have units, you need to make sure your units match up. So, for example, we have miles, miles, and then in the denominator, we both ha they both have hours. Okay. That's how you always write a proportion. Okay, your units in your numerator have to be the same and your units in the denominator have to be the same. Okay, so the one over here on the right here is incorrect because here I have miles in my numerator but I have miles in my denominator. Okay, so that would be an incorrect setup. And um, thought interesting fact I found, moths are unable to fly during an earthquake. Not sure why, maybe somebody can look that up. Have a great day.